What he traded on, in essence, was his family connections. He came from a long line of super successful businessmen with plenty of connections to the super rich. A $32,000 a month mansion rented from Donald Trump, Sam Israel seemed to have it all. At least that's what the clients who invested in his $450 million hedge fund thought. Samuel III was a grandson of a New Orleans titan who built a family-owned commodities business. His grandfather's company sold for $42 million back in 1981. Sam started his career on Wall Street in 1982 as a messenger on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. He eventually worked his way up to trader. He honed his skills, and he got hired by a multi-billion dollar hedge fund. You're part of a family that's been in a certain business for a, uh, what now, it's been close to 60, 80, 100 years. Most people are going to give you their ear at that point. So in 1996, he left his successful job to start his own firm with two friends. They called it Bayou Management Group. The name was a play on his hometown of New Orleans. He used his well-heeled contacts and deep Rolodex to pitch investments in the secretive world of hedge funds. If you're going to invest in a hedge fund, uh, there's really not much transparency. So you're really taking more risk because you really don't know what the manager's going to be doing. Bayou did right by their clients until 1998 when they claimed big profits that were actually losses. He decided to stop telling his clients he was losing money uh, and started creating false statements showing these consistent returns. He decided to create a fake accounting firm to audit the hedge fund. But when one client asked to withdraw his $53 million, the money wasn't there. This was the first sign that Bayou's precarious house of cards was about to fall. If someone wanted to get out, they would just take one person's money and pay somebody else. But not this time. The pyramid began to crumble. In May of 2006, Bayou Hedge Fund filed for bankruptcy. The scenario is very similar to the person you know who is a degenerate gambler, who gets behind and thinks, I'm just going to make a big score. I'll double up on the 49ers this weekend, and I'll make it all back. As it turns out, Bayou built more than $400 million from investors over seven years. These victims were part of one of the largest hedge fund frauds in history. Bayou itself and Sam Israel, Israel was really the first big nationally or internationally known uh, hedge fund Ponzi scheme. In April 2008, Sam pled guilty to lying about investment results and creating a phony auditing system. He was ordered to forfeit $300 million, and he was sentenced to 20 years behind bars. But incredibly, he was released on bail. The stranger part was when he was supposed to report to jail, that he was actually driving himself to jail, as opposed to someone else sending him to jail. And that's when he did his legendary maneuver. Instead of reporting to federal prison, police found his SUV abandoned on a bridge over the Hudson River with the words, Suicide is painless, written in the dust on the hood. Car keys and a bottle of pills were on the front seat of the car, but the cops easily saw through the hoax, and they began an all-out manhunt for Israel. It was a big story when he stole all the money, but the story just blossomed when he faked his suicide because, you know, that's like a made-for-TV movie. For more than a month, a nationwide manhunt turned up empty. No one could find the elusive Sam Israel. He ended up going up to Massachusetts, and he was living in an RV, and his mother actually convinced him to turn himself in, and he pulled up to a police station in Massachusetts on a scooter on his cell phone. Israel had been hiding with his longtime girlfriend, Deborah Ryan, who was also arrested for aiding and abetting a fugitive. Sam's run from the law added years on top of his initial 20-year sentence. But one question remains. Why didn't Sam Israel just operate a legitimate hedge fund? In his own words, he wrote, I cheated my investors because I was too afraid to admit my failure. I did not want the world and my family to see me as a failure. And what about the victims in this case? The investors should probably get about 50 cents on the dollar back. And for a big Ponzi scheme like this, that's a pretty good recovery. 